how to read the waveforms in DJ Pro. I'm DJ Spiegelspin, and I'm going to show you how. When it comes to the waveforms inside DJ software, there are various visual cues that you could see with your eyes instead of hearing with your ears so that if you don't have headphones to do pre-cueing or if you don't have time to use the headphones, you could tell exactly what the song is going to be sound like and what's going to happen in the song just by viewing the waveforms. So watch this video to the end to be an expert at le reading the waveforms on DJ Pro. When it comes to the waveforms in DJ Pro, there are a few things to be mindful of and one of them is the size of the waveforms. So if you see over here, this waveform is bigger. It fills up most of the, the area for the waveforms. And that means it's gonna have a bigger sound. It's gonna have more bass. And now if we go over here to where it gets smaller, it's gonna have a smaller song. It's gonna have more high frequencies and mid-range frequencies than low frequencies. So if you see a part of the song that is really thin and, and then it goes into something bigger, like this one right here, it starts and then it goes in and then right here is the drop of the song. So if you wanna do mixing by with, with the drops, what you could do is you could start a new song by the drop when the, when the other drop is coming. So you'd let this song play. You'd let this song play over here. All right. This song is going to be playing. And now when it gets to the bigger area, the drop, I'm going to press play on the deck on the right and then switch off the crossfader or turn down the volume, which one's easier for you. So ready? This is what it sounds like. Three, two, one, let's go. And that is a drop swap mix. So even if you're playing songs that someone requested or songs that you're not that familiar with, you will know when the drop will be and you will also know when the breakdowns will be just by looking at the song. So if we go over here, this over here, where, where it turns into like a like a funnel. Here, I'll show, you can see it more over here. It's gonna be like a whooshing sound. So if we play over here. And then that's gonna be like a whooshing song. And then over here too, you guys could see this funnel. So what you could do, if you wanna do a mix with this and you're doing it just based on the waveforms, you see that this part, this song on the right has a funnel over here. And then this song over here has a funnel over here. So our transition that we're gonna be doing based just on the waveforms is when it gets to the funnel in one song, you just play where the funnel is in the next song. So it's a smooth transition. People already are expecting that type of sound. And then you're just playing it with a different track. And now you're in a new song and you did a smooth transition. So just like this. And you see how the funnel went on the opposite way. And that was a whoosh up. So as you get more familiar with these waveforms, you're gonna know exactly what the song is gonna do based on just looking at the track. So now, wh now what you could use this for is if you're DJing in a, with a setup that you don't that you don't have a place to plug in your headphones. So let's say if I was DJing. I, you would need a bunch of adapters to connect into the USB-C and then split the output. So if you just know how to use the visual cues, then you don't need the headphones. Also, if you like, if you're like me, and when if you're at like a house party or if you're somewhere, and then you could connect through Bluetooth, and then you could be DJing with Bluetooth using the visual cues because you can't use your ears to mix the tracks because 
Bluetooth has a slight late latency. So even if you're pressing the buttons on time, it's not gonna be accurate because of the latency on Bluetooth. So if you want to DJ with Bluetooth, which I made a whole video on, and I'll link it in here, you are gonna need to know the visual cues. And now once you know the visual cues and it's a song you're familiar with, you could put cue points on different spots of the song. And then you will have a visual representation of where you start the song, where you end the song, and a good place to mix in, a good place to mix out. And then it's with these color-coded cue points. So if you look at top, this one right here, I marked this song at one of the funnels. So that's where I'm gonna mix out this song when I play it. And then I also did the first drop and the second drop. So now if you have a coupon, a cue point for the second drop and the first drop, you could shorten the song by doing the drop swap. So we're gonna wait for it to go to this first drop cue point, and then at the exact time, we're gonna press the second drop. And now you're farther along in the song, so you got to play the good parts, you got to play a drop of the song, but you, you could make a three minute song into a minute and a half song, so you keep on playing songs and keep the mix interesting. And now a, another way to use the visual cues is by the color coding. These ones are color coded. In older versions of the app, it wasn't color coded. So the different colors means a different type of sound. So this blue color on this song, on the song on the right, sounds like that like staticky sound. And then over here, Let's see if we got any blue sections on this one. We got this part in the middle that is the same sound. So as you get to know which color makes which sound, not only can you view it by the size and the pattern of the song, you could also know what's going to happen with the colors. And now this also plays into a big effect with neuro with neuromix which is the biggest update for dj pro and it's groundbreaking so i definitely recommend you using it so if you look at the waveforms when i change the neuromix settings it's going to change the waveforms so look so if we take away the drums you see, you see how it gets thinner? Because the drums are bringing that bass, making the song more powerful. So if we take the drums out, the waveform gets smaller. And if we bring them back up, it gets normal size. And now the harmonics are the, 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 the hi-hats and stuff that's in between, maybe like a piano or a guitar. And you see, there it disappears. So if a good way to get familiar with this, a good way to practice, is put on a song that you play a lot and then play around with the Nero mix so you could hear and see which part is gonna be vocals, which part's gonna be drums, and which part is going to be the harmonics. So if we take the vocals out, now we know which part has vocals in this song. So any song that you play a lot, load up it onto a deck and then mess around with the Nero mix and take mental notes of which color, which pattern, which size of the waveform makes which song. And the more that you know your songs, the more that you, more information you have, the better DJ you will be. So if you like this type of video and you wanna learn how to be a great iPad DJ, please subscribe to this channel and share it with your friends. Thank you.